Hey, thanks for joining us today. I'm meteorologist Taylor Cox, and we are tracking storms across the west coast, across the east coast, but it's going to be very, very minor today. We're not watching for a ton today. However, more storms expected as we head into the new year. So let's go ahead and take a look at your weather headlines today. Yes, that snow keeps piling on. We are adding more and more snow to our 2025 totals as the year comes to a wrap. And we'll have a, a look at your New Year's Eve forecast. Is it going to stay this cold? You know, it's chilly today, chilly yesterday, but it does look like a little warm up is in the, in the future. So we'll talk about that. And then we're going to talk about weekend storms that'll kick off 2026. Can you believe it? We are already into the last few days of 2025. Well, the last weekend of 2025 was pretty impressive. This past weekend, if you have not seen our pictures and videos and coverage already, we had several tornadoes over the weekend, mainly on Sunday across Illinois. But we had another tornado in Indiana and another in Kentucky as well. Very, very impressive here. You know, tornadoes in December are not uncommon. We get about 20, 30 tornadoes a year in December. This year, we're a little on that low side. I think we're at nine now in December. However, we stayed pretty dry yesterday and we'll stay pretty dry today as well. But the winds have changed, they're in the forecast and we're starting to get, to get a clearer view on exactly what we're expecting as we head into 2026. So we'll be talking about that today. One of the big headlines for today is going to be that snow. You can see that across Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and New York. We've got some really strong winds in this area as well as we did yesterday as well. Cold temperatures coming into Florida and some strong winds in this area, and that's going to make for some fire concern. You go farther up to the north, and for the most of the west coast, it's pretty quiet out there, except for a little bit of showers and storms in Los Angeles, and we'll talk more about that storm risk here in just a few minutes. But for your snowfall totals, what you see is what you get. We're going to add a little bit to that snowfall totals up in the northern portion of the U.S. But other than that, we're not going to see too much snow coming into places like Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. I know that some models are trying to bring in a light snowfall in Oklahoma as we head into the end of this week. However, I just do not think that that's going to happen. And we'll talk about why. Air stagnation advisory, what in the world is that? We've got very, very calm conditions in some of these areas that are creating poor air quality in places like Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. If you go farther to the west, we've got very, very windy conditions. So we have a wind advisory highlighted there in gold or tan. Winter storm warning highlighted in pink for some of this lake effect snow that's coming off the Great Lakes there. Interesting, we have a red flag warning in Georgia, Jacksonville also in that freeze warning. So we've got cold and windy conditions as you go farther down to the southeast. Continuing with your chance for severe weather here, significant hail model, just not too impressive today at all. Actually, one of the least impressive hail models that I've seen all year long. So we're ending for that hail on a very, very quiet note for this year. However, things will change as we head into the weekend and into the second week of January. We're really starting to see a pattern change from the 8th, 9th, 10th of the month. So we have to wait a little bit to get there, but we're, we're already watching it. Already in December, we're keeping an eye on that. Taking a look at your future radar, for the most part, we stay dry. So if you have any New Year's Eve plans, you probably don't need that rain jacket or snow jacket, but it's going to be chilly. So you may just need a jacket to keep you warm. We've got a little bit of snow across places like Wisconsin and Michigan, New York and Pennsylvania, as we talked about earlier. More snow moving into these places. I know we always have a few people watching from Ohio. You guys, especially in the northern and central portion of the state, could get some snow over the next 24 hours, mainly late tonight and into early tomorrow morning. After that, what about your precip chances, snow and rain over the next five days? It's like we have a hole just right over Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Arkansas, Missouri, and Louisiana, where we're just not getting any rain over the next five days. You go out to the west, you get rain. You go out to the east, you get rain as well. I'm going to highlight the far southeast. We're going to talk more about southeastern portion of the U.S., Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia in just a few minutes because that'll be the next area that we're watching for storms. Yes, potential for severe storms there. 
Let's take a look at your future radar now. Again, I told you it was pretty quiet as we head into New Year's Eve. However, on the back side of New Year's Eve, that's when things start to change. So you can see Wednesday night to Thursday, hello 2026, we are officially into the new year. We start to get some snow out in the western portion of Colorado, eastern portion of Utah, southern side of Wyoming. All of that moisture will continue to make its way into the plains. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier, where some models want to bring a little bit of snow, maybe even some ice into places like Oklahoma and Kansas. Oh no, I said that three letter word, ice. I know, we don't want that freezing rain in this area, right? Well, unfortunately, it's possible. However, what's the potential this will happen? I would give it a maybe 10%. A very, very low chance to get anything accumulating in this area. Very, very low. I'm not expecting any sort of winter weather on New Year's Day. I'm not canceling my plans for this. I'm just saying that you may see some models. You may see some things on social media that show otherwise. However, I'm saying extremely low risk for winter weather. Not all models are bringing moisture into this area. However, it does kind of note that the winds of change are in the forecast. That's where I want to bring you down to the southeast, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. That'll be your next chance for strong to severe storms. Another pretty low chance here, it's not terribly impressive. However, we will outline that for the potential for lightning, thunder, and maybe a very minor severe weather threat as we head into the end of this weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look at that severe weather outlook. Not expecting any severe weather today. Tomorrow we could see lightning and thunder for Los Angeles. By Wednesday, very similar setup where we're including Phoenix in that risk as well. And then we take a break for Thursday and Friday. After that, I actually wanna go back to this map right here. After that, I'm gonna skip ahead to Saturday because that's whenever we take you down to the southeast. There we go. So let's skip ahead from Wednesday to Saturday, excuse me, Wednesday to Friday. Late Friday from southern Louisiana into Mississippi and Alabama, that'll be your next chance for storms. Again, lightning and thunder are going to be your most likely things, most likely hazards with this storm threat. Uh, strong winds, it's possible. It's going to be a pretty minor threat right now. We're not terribly impressed with this setup. However, it's the best chance for storms that we have in the forecast. Saturday, very similar. We just shift to the east a little bit across Alabama, Georgia, and the panhandle of Florida. So now moving on, what about your New Year's travels? A lot of people flying out today. Most areas across the country look good. We're in the green uh, for today and early tomorrow morning. What about New Year's Eve itself, tomorrow evening? A little bit of snow across places like Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, that could cause some delays. However, we don't see a ton of red on the map quite yet. Great news there. And for most of Thursday, we also have a ton of green on the map. So great news there, you will need your jacket. It's going to be cold out there. Let's talk about temperatures now as we head into New Year's Eve. Uh, 38 early tomorrow morning here in Oklahoma City, 29 in Kansas City, 30 degrees in Denver. So it's chilly, below freezing for most, but tomorrow afternoon, if you have early afternoon plans, it looks really nice out there, very seasonable or normal for this time of the year. Tomorrow evening, I, let's, let's rewind one more time here. I wanna go back to, ooh, 3 a.m. midnight. Here we go. All right, you're ringing in the new year temperatures are in the mid 40s here in Oklahoma City. We'll take that, not too bad. 32 exactly freezing in Kansas City. One degree below zero in Minneapolis and 31 just sitting below that freezing mark in St. Louis. This will be your temperature as you ring in the new year. Early on Thursday morning, temperatures are below freezing for most of the country, but we warm back up by Thursday afternoon to the 50s and 60s down to the south, and we just hit that freezing mark farther up to the north. Moving through here, ooh, we warm up nice on Friday. Now, do you see why we put the potential for storms down in the southern portion of the U.S. for Friday and Saturday? We get those warmer temperatures. Temperatures are in the 70s on Friday afternoon down in Shreveport, southern side of Louisiana, Tallahassee, 67. So yeah, I do think that there is a potential for some strong storms in this area. How much moisture could we get? How much forcing could we get? Those are the questionable factors that could limit the storm risk. So we'll keep an eye on it for you. Of course, we'll be tracking it. 
as we head into next week, now I want to bring you into, let's see, I may go back and talk about, here we go. I want to talk about Friday and Saturday and into Sunday and Monday. I think my forecast goes all the way out that far. Here we go, Sunday and now Monday. What we're going to see as we head into the middle of next week, my forecast doesn't go all the way out that far, is we're going to start to see a pattern change. So what about temperatures? We're warmer than normal, just barely, for a good portion of the US. Friday and Saturday, we stay just slightly above average for this time of the year. But it looks like that's going to be the trend as we head into January. Now, yesterday in the forecast, I told you that we were going to go into what January and February looks like. We're going to start there today, and then we're going to go a little bit deeper into it tomorrow. So as always, join us for the forecast tomorrow. Let's take a look at January. The 4th through the 8th, it does look like temperatures will stay above average. So a little above average, warmer than average for this time of the year. It looks like we will also stay in this dry pattern. However, I'm wondering if that will change after the 8th. So Michaela and I were talking about today, the 9th, the 10th. That is something that you should have on your calendar to make sure that you are watching the weather as things start to change on those days. What about as we get into the rest of winter and early spring? January through March now, it looks like the southern portion of the U.S. has a really good chance to stay warmer than normal. Meanwhile, farther up to the north, temperatures are going to be cooler than normal. The rest of us are expecting a pretty normal winter. What about the chances for rain or snow? Farther down to the south, we're going to stay pretty dry. Now, this does give me concern for our fire risk. This area of the country from western Oklahoma, western Kansas, southern side of Colorado, into New Mexico and the panhandle of Texas, I would keep an eye on that for the potential fire risk with a lack of rain right now through lack of rain in January. Then you start to get those stronger cold fronts coming in February and March. That's going to pick up the wind speeds. That'll increase that fire risk. So we've got to keep an eye on this area. Did you know it's been over 30 days in portions or a good portion of Oklahoma since we've seen even a tenth of an inch of rain? I mean, that's crazy. We absolutely need the rain in this area. And unfortunately, it looks like we're going to stay dry for at least the next five to six days, if not up to 10 days. Anyway, let's move on here. It does look like we're going to see a little bit more moisture coming into places like Chicago and St. Louis as we head into the end of winter. There you go. And there's your forecast today. Pretty short and sweet for the most part because we are in this lull where we're dry across the U.S., cold for most. However, things will change as we head into the new year. So as always, check back tomorrow for your latest forecast. We'll have a forca forecast tomorrow. We'll be off on Thursday, but then we'll be back here on Friday. And if you're taking advantage of this quiet weather, go ahead and give us a call. 855-334-4245 to get set up with a subscription for a hail, wind, or tornado map. This is the perfect time of year. People are home, you can go back, and you can go back to those storms that happened earlier in the year. In May, June, and July, we had a lot of storms. We were pretty busy then. You can go back, you can go back over those areas that got hit earlier this year, see if you missed anything. Info at hailtrace.com, hailtrace.com for more weather or for more uh, information on a subscription. And of course, give us a follow on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. We'll be posting more weather videos on those platforms over the next few days. Thanks for joining us today. I'm meteorologist Taylor Cox, and we'll see you back here, same time, same place, tomorrow.